And uh, I am de a descendant from the Vikings, because Dodd, I read somewhere once that Dodd becomes, comes from a, a Norse word called Dodda. Dodda. So there's so many Dodds round Chester, they sailed up the River Dee. Hmm. Difficult to know whether to take you seriously. Yes. Well, as I say, the Vikings, they discovered Iceland until, and then, of course, there was double glazing, and uh, <laughs> as the, dropping the feather, and... Uh, We're going to hear your new record. Is it typically Ken Dodd? Yes. I'm, I'm what they call, Paul, I'm what they call a middle-of-the-road singer. I've got to pack it in because I've been knocked down four times already. <laughs> uh, but this, every year, round about Christmas time, we get a chance to get a record in the charts. It's our only chance, like Little Donkey or Two Little Boys. And, and this is a lovely record. It's on the Ritz label, so you can either play it or eat it. <laughs> and it's, it's the sort of record we, we all have words at Christmas, Christmas cards and Christmas greetings. This is called Little Words. Ken, if you'd like to go over and get ready to sing it, we'd love to hear it. Thank okay, you. thank you. While Ken's going over there to get ready, let me tell you that later in the programme, Marion Foster will be chatting about the life and times of Sir William Walton. So so do stay with us on the programme today. Now, as Ken has said, his latest single, Little Words, here's Ken Dodd. Little words have so much meaning When you mean the words you say Little words like glad to see you How are you? Hello, good day Little words that bid you welcome Little words that say goodbye Little words that have you laughing Little words that make you cry There are words for all occasions Words for all you say and do But the greatest words of all Are I love you Little words like happy birthday, happy anniversary Little words like how I miss you, words like hurry back to me Little words cause silly quarrels and the sunshine turns to rain But the words like sorry darling help you make it up again Words like God be with you in all you say and do But I know I'll never find the words for you Little words, good night, God bless you Little words that say a prayer Little words like get well soon And little words like please take care for all occasions, words for all you say and do, but the greatest words of all are I love you. Yes, the greatest words of all are I Doom, doom, spit in the right place. You've got one or two interesting letters there, and here's something else that perhaps Paul, Paul doesn't know this time. Mm -hmm. um, a little letter that we've had about him. Well, this is from a, a, a Mrs. J. Allwright of Rotting Dean, Ooh. East Sussex. It says, your presenter Paul was talking to a young man, pop singer, with a two-coloured hairdo who spoke very nicely, but happened to say England instead of Britain. This brought a very quick response from your presenter, which my husband and I thought was extremely rude and quite uncalled for. Well, I'm sure well, he was, sure it was not in rude. In fact, not he rude, wasn't Paul. being but rude. It, the lady is right, though. This is because uh, it's the United Kingdom, isn't it, really? We, we, yes. we should speak about the United Kingdom and, and being all together. And uh... That's right. But, you see, the problem is, we are very aware here that everybody who lives in Scotland and Wales and Northern Ireland quite rightly objects when we talk about England yes. as such. Yes. So we always try to say Britain so that we mean everybody, That's you see. Right. Because uh, Mrs. Macdonald of Dunfermline, um, she was saying, she said, personally, I am sick of this little Englander attitude. You know, you'd think Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland didn't exist. So she was pleased oh, to hear know. what Paul said. Yeah, we know Scotland exists. So we are have trying. You those, have you seen those porridge tankers <laughs> going up the M6? <laughs> have now, you tried to overtake them? It's no. terrible. That's, that's how they always turn, they're always turning around so it doesn't go hard by the time it gets to Aberdeen. <laughs> you have some nice letters, though, about the programme that we did uh, in Wales, actually, when the rain stopped. This is Mrs White. 
Mrs. White of Mansfield says, Dear Pebble Mill, the beautiful scenery, the marvellous jazz of George Melly, the lovely natural paintings of the lady artist featured in that picturesque meadow. Mm -hmm. The interviews, especially from Bob Langley, tramping the countryside. Tramping. He's got a new suit, you know. <laughs> this. A lot of people wonder, you know, why Bob Langley keeps going off on these uh, long walks in the Lake District on his own. It's because they can't stand him at home. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's because he can't stand my cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Sheer have... poetry. And with such a depth of feeling. That was nice. well, that's, you have that's another like rather one. nice letter, actually, about a little boy. If, if I can sort boy. of uh, ah. help you out there. Okay, well, this is. Uh, we, have, we have a young fan, thank goodness. <laughs> from Mrs. Bauer. <laughs> I'm right. writing to tell you about my <clears throat> 13 month old son. That must be a real young one. The 13 month old young. son, mm. Andrew Bauer. He's crazy about your programme. Especially the music at the beginning. We only have to say it's time for Pebble Mill and he starts clapping, singing and dancing. Now I gather it's the only time that she gets any peace when Yours he's watching is the, the only programme program he will watch. The only time I get a few minutes. I've when sent you a photograph. And she of wants him. a photograph back. And perhaps you could send him a photograph back of all of you, and then he might sit and look at it and give me a rest. <laughs> I think we better um you know, stop going through the letters now because uh, we have another interesting item coming up. But I'd like at this point to say that one of our letters from Mr. and Mrs. Packham from Bognor Regis was saying, um, you have a nice new face on the program, a blonde lady, but she's never been introduced to us on the air. Well, in fact, we did do that uh, earlier on uh, in the run. But, of course, many of you will realise that it's Josephine we're talking about, Josephine Bucken. So now that you know the name properly, Josephine, <laughs> thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thank you, Marion. I've been ready to come into Peter Seabrook's greenhouse <laughs> like this. Do you think they'll, they'll ever, no, let us use the studio instead of coming into the, the foyer like this. No, I like, I, like this, uh, I like this setting because I can always see if my bus is coming, you know, <laughs> around the show. And it's nice to see, have you ever found out who lives over the road? Yeah, they're, they're actually very nice people. Yeah. Very this is Delphonts, one of them, you know. Oh, really? Uh-huh, that's why they get in before you. <laughs> <laughs> but I noticed this, this time you've gone all botanical now. This is all like, could I have a couple of cuttings before? So, I want to try and get a Bob Langley cutting, if I could. A cutting of Bob Langley? Cutting, yes, just below the, uh, the turnips there, because I could pop it in a grow bag and grow my own little dwarf Bob Langley. Because <laughs> they're all the go, you know, you could market them. People come to your house and say, oh, I see you've got a potted Bob Langley here. How is it? Oh, it's wilting. Uh, well, I, I think you should rub its extremities with olive oil. It seems to have a, you know, beneficial effect. Oh, okay. And a drop of gin three times a week never hurt anybody. <laughs> Do you realise, Paul, this is a most unusual, this is the most unique programme on the BBC? Why is that? Because nobody ever listens to it. <laughs> oh, that's not... <laughs> we know, they can't. Millions. They can't. This is, this is, this is Pebble Mill at one, isn't it? Yeah. Well, everybody's, everybody's eating. Everybody's having lunch. All over the country now, people are munching. They're slurping soup, crunching crisps, eat it. They're at that table. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's eating, and they can't, with the racket, they can't hear a word we're talking about. So I think we should really do this part of the show in sort of uh, mime, or, if you'll pardon the expression, body language. Oh, dear. Like what? Mm. Well, body language, I mean, uh, I've got jokes written all over me, you see. If I was to show you my stomach, you'd be in hysterics. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, yeah. All over the world, people have their own body language. Now, the Italians, for instance, they, they talk with their hands. Not with their hands, always with their hands. If they want to whisper, they put gloves on and speak with a muffled voice. <laughs> Germans always speak with their heels. They're always clicking their heels. Ah, oh, mein Liebchen, let us go outside for a quick, quick click. Uh, the Irish, of course, if you see an Irishman standing in front of a mirror, they're usually waving their arms around. That means they're arguing with themselves. And... Scots, of course, they speak in a sporran language. They, uh, uh, Scots always speak with their fists. Yeah, you, they give you a punch in the mouth and tell her that's lip reading. Uh, <laughs> it's just as well I know you're joking. Well, it's the spirit of good, the season, a season of goodwill. Of course, goodwill to all men mm. and ladies, of course, as well. Christmas. <laughs> You, cards. you always work very hard at Christmas. I mean, you, you're usually involved in all sorts of things because you, you're very fond of kids. Christmas must be a special pantomime. time for you. Pantomime is a very important part of the time of the year. Pantomime is the... We are the only nation who have pantomime. You could imagine Puss in Clogs or uh, Babes in Siberia or J.R. and his Beanstalk. And <laughs> even our great national institutions, there's the Houses of Parliament, they have their own pantomimes. Do they? Oh, yes, indeed. Mrs. Thatcher, of course, is the good fairy. <laughs> Cyril Smith is Humpty Dumpty. Uh, <laughs> David Steele wanted to be Humpty Dumpty because he likes sitting on the fence. Uh, <laughs> Eric Heffer, he plays part of a cow. Uh, which, <laughs> Heffer, you see. <laughs> Eric Heffer, oh, he's a riot. <laughs> then, of course, all the, the, the principal boy has to be someone with long, flowing locks and good legs. Michael Hastertin. <laughs> oh, part of uh, Dick Whittington's cat, of course, he's played by Willie Hamilton because he gets under everybody's feet. Oh, dear. Well, I look forward to pantomime every year. It's, uh, it's the first day of rehearsals next Monday, and I shall be there bright and early.
What, what is this thing you've got here, incidentally? This, oh, this is a present for you. This is, this is, a, this is a, because it's, it's quite a long way off Christmas, this is an early Christmas present for you. That's very kind of you. An yeah. egg. It's a turkey. It's a turkey. Well, it's an early Christmas present, <laughs> I'd say. <laughs> it's got a bit of a waiting going. <laughs> Thank you so much. What will you be doing personally over Christmas, then? This panto is what? Which one are you doing? I'm most, most unusual pantomime. It's a great action pantomime, because kids today, they're not impressed by sort of uh, fairy spells. So I've chosen Sinbad the Sailor. Mm. Sin it hasn't been done for 100 years. Sinbad the Sailor at Stockport. I might as well uh, tell you where it is. The Davenport Theatre in Stockport. And as I say... Uh, I play Sinbad the Sailor, and then we have the, the Diddy Men, and uh, uh, acrobats, pirates, swinging from ropes, and... Uh, mm. Well, Ken, talking of Diddy people, we've got some youngsters over there. We'd like you to go and join them, if you would. Yes. And uh, sing another song for us, which will be called Hold My Hand. Well, this is a song that's all about children all over the world. All right, if you'd like to go over and join them. Okay. I'll thank everyone at home for watching the programme today and tell you that tomorrow at one o'clock we're back on the air with another edition of Pebble Mill at One. Joining us tomorrow, Prue Leith will be continuing her good-looking cooking series. We'll also have Kiki D here singing for us and I'll be doing a pop slot with Status Quo. So join us tomorrow at one o'clock. In the meantime, the kids and Ken Dodd bring a smile to your face. This is a wonderful number. This is called Hold My Hand. Ken Dodd. <laughs> Find a way for the children With a happy song and a happy face We can make this world a better place For the children If all the nations join and sing The bells around the world will ring For the children And what we have we'd like to share Show you all that the children care For the children we're singing out around the world To every other boy and girl We're holding hands And reaching out to all of you Hold my hand Hold it tight Hold my hand in yellow, yellow and white seem wide, we can always reach to the other side for the children. We can send our love, we can send some smiles, send love and peace a thousand miles to the children. And we shall be their guiding light and sing along into the night for the children. What a wonderful place this world would stay If we all held hands each and every day Like the children And we're singing